first week on Saga Saturday. What's a Saga? Do you know? This. You know how that works. Angelo's been digging into the drawing side of Fusion 360, which is, it's new in Fusion, and <laughs> you want some stuff. Yes. It doesn't do exactly what it should, you know, from an industrial standpoint. And that's okay, maybe we'll feed back to Autodesk and give them some good suggestions. Um, but we're going through all the parts and we're getting our dimensions dialed down because as we make the parts, there's a lot of things that need to be measured and dialed and perfect um, or else the pen's literally not going to go together. Yeah. yeah. So I love making tight tolerance stuff and he knows how to make tight tolerance stuff. So let's uh, put the two together and make yeah. some good drawings. I've never worked from drawings before, so this is all new to me. It'll make things easier. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm starting to see it now. I really... Yeah. Make it easier. We'll be able to see right away what we have to inspect. Um, what's not critical, um, it doesn't have to be inspected. Right. And so that way we're not, you know, we don't chase our tail with anything, everything fits yeah. together. Uh, we have key dimensions that we'll check in batches, and there you go, there's a saga. We'll have key dimensions that we'll check in batches, and uh, certain things we'll check 100%, and that way we can streamline things and go forward with uh, making these. So, I mean, the goal is to make however many parts we want to make and know that they're always good. Exactly. And know what to check, when to yes. check it. So nothing yeah. has to be fitted together, everything from one pen to the next will, will fit. Yeah, because the first batch we made, we're like, okay, this batch of parts fits with this batch of parts, and then these fit with that, and we have to measure everything and like yeah. pair them together. But that was the learning experience yeah. you got to go through, right? It was a development, essentially. Yeah, totally. I'm not complaining. I, it was kind of awesome, actually. But but yeah. yeah, we want everything just within tolerance so that we know it all fits. Okay. Yeah. What's up, bud? This part right here is the slider. Uh, there's a lot of internal dimensions. That's critical, that's critical, that's critical, that's sort of critical. OD's, like the lengths, the diameters, everything's critical. There's a lot more to put on this. I don't really want to put all my dimensions out in the world for everybody to see, but um, it's really nice to be able to see the cross section of the part. And then that's what it's gonna look like. So like while you're making the part, it's nice to be able to see inside it to be able to know what uh, what you're cutting, what to look like, what to look for. So Aaron just asked me, what is 3D machining? And this is a good opportunity to talk about that. So 2D machining is simply two axes of the machine moving at one time. 3D machining is all three. So typically, like this handle here, 2D, it's just going around the outside. We're moving an X and Y at the same time. Z goes down, X and Y go around, Z goes up, 2D machining. 3D machining requires movement of all three axes. So if I was gonna make this mouse with a ball end mill, it would have to stick out pretty far. You gotta move a Z or Z, depending on Canadian or not. Z goes up, X and Y go around, so you're moving in three axes, X, Y, Z, all at the same time to be able to do this contour. Two axes would be just around the outside. You can go up and again, and up and again, and up and again, but you're gonna get this stair step look. So when we make the pocket clip, I want everything kind of rounded and blended and nice, and I wanna hit every contour. So we are doing three axis machining. Although technically on the lathe, we're doing even more because you have your C, your C axis, which is a rotational axis. So C is the one spindle going, so I have C1 and I have C2, and uh, they're kind of synced, so I'm adding another axis, so kind of it's four axis machining. No, it, it is four axis, because I'll position C, and then do my three axis, and then position C again, um, so it is four axis. Now this lathe here is actually a six axis lathe, because there's X, Y, Z, and then there's C1, C2, and then the B axis is the whole subspindle moving in to grab onto your part and pull it out. And technically I am using all, all six of those while making the clips, but not simultaneously. Because um, the spindles are synced and the B comes in, and then you have XYZ on top of that. So maybe that kind of makes sense for what uh, two axis, three axis, four axis, and six axis all does. Um, the lathe is a, is a mind bender to get your head around with all six things kind of need to be perfect or else 
or else you're going to end up with stuff like that. So this happened when um, one of the C-axis had a home command uh, before it was unclamped. So it's clamped here and homing the C is like rotating it to zero and it just rotated to zero before it unclamped so it, it twisted the thing and uh, luckily no damage except for the clip and it, it was a minor thing. It's, it's kind of easy to make major mistakes so I got to be very very careful about that. But luckily I've worked out most of the kinks for making the Saga Pen uh, last month during the first batch. We made about 30, 35 or so. I know that all six of us each got one, gave a couple away to super close friends and we sold like 20 something at Blade Show. So uh, not a lot, but we're looking to make a lot more. Very excited to get into it. And uh, yeah, next week I think should be a good uh, pen week. I've got some, some critical projects, knife stuff that I want to increase the um, output. This is a little teaser. Those of you who know will know. I got to focus on this first for the knives and then we'll get into pens. So check this out. These are made by the Japanese company Big Daishawa. Phoebe. Oh, that's a funny noise. So it's a T-slot cover. See how it's kind of springy? So they go in here. Come here, I'll show you. We gotta look inside the machine. These will go in there and click in place so that all of our chips and dirt and stuff don't pack in all the covers. So my friend Rob Lockwood told me about these and said they were awesome. And we would try it out right now, but the machine's going and we'd get kind of wet. Should we open the door and let Aaron get wet right now? <laughs> no. no. Okay, good, they fit. I was worried there for a second. Oh, that's pretty nice. So they do go below the surface, so they could go under a vise. So all this, all this chip packing right here will hopefully be a thing of the past. Cool. So we did get a new uh, tool holder in today. This is a Technix Slim Fit Collet. My buddy Danny Rudolph um, has been using these for a long time. So it came with this guy, just so I can show you what it looks like. It has a super shallow taper thing. Normally an ER collet is like that, with a double taper. This has a single taper and a draw stud, like a draw bar thingy, which is stuck in there. Um, so the screw pulls it back supposed to be super good for run out and then we're going to use this to make the pocket clip on the um, on the saga pen using a 1 8 ball end mill in the past we were using this guy from AB tools it's a 1 8 um, uh, I forget it, accu hold I think it's called I crashed this one notice how it's all deformed there's broken end mill in there I can't even get the set screws out I have another one in the machine right now I'll show you in a second um, and even with the set screws on the side, we were worried about run out, but it's got like just one tenth of run out, which is nothing. So it, it has worked really well. I do think this will be a better solution. And it's not much more expensive. Um, check out the one in here. It's this one here in the lathe. I currently have a deburring brush in the same um, AccuHold holder, but that's kind of how it looks in the turret of the machine. So this is especially useful when we're trying to get around the collet right now, so the tool has to extend quite a bit out of the tool holder. So you need some sort of extension to be able to get past here. Otherwise, your big ER25 nut is gonna crash into that. Um, see this, this spot right there? Notice how these two are like exactly the same? <laughs> yeah, so that happened. No real damage, um, thankfully. That actually happened a couple months ago when my friend Rob Lockwood was uh, visiting from Seattle. And I wasn't paying full attention when this happened and I had my offset wrong and uh, it crashed, so. 
feel stupid, but but yeah, this will give you plenty of reach and be a really good solution, I think. So when making a clip, there's the turning, there's the drilling, and then there's a lot of 3D machining. So I have to make sure, critically sure, that my, um, let's tighten this guy up, that my end mill stick out is good enough to reach. That, that will barely clear, but it should. Maybe I'll go a little bit more for production, but, um, but yeah, like every, basically every surface in here is 3D machined with this ball mill, including the top chamfers and everything, or corner rounds. So I want, I want this tool to last, I want it to work really good, I want no run out, and uh, I think this will be an awesome solution for that. So hopefully that's enough footage, Aaron, but uh, thanks for watching Saga Saturday, everybody, and stay tuned for next week. We'll get right back into it. Later. So